And joining us once again are Charlie Hart and Dave Owens with Dow AgroSciences, as well as Bob McCann with the McFadden Ranch here in Victoria, Texas. Charlie, we've talked a lot about both prickly pear and mesquite. I guess I'd be interested, uh, what's the difference in the impact both those species have on range and, more importantly, how we control them? There are some fundamental differences between them that, that are kind of interesting. Uh, with prickly pear, not only um, it, 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 are we reducing the amount of, of forage that we have available to livestock from a production standpoint and, and, and competing for moisture, but, but also for space. Um, the, the, the area that a prickly pear um, take, takes over in the land is it actually becomes ungrazable to livestock. and so the access to that forage is not there. The good thing about that is, is when you do control prickly pear, the response to that forage coming back is, is very quick. So the, the, the return on your investment is, is, is quite quick in terms of after you've done that control. Mesquite, on the other hand, really changes composition more than it does anything else. It does reduce production somewhat because those roots are competing for moisture with the grasses. But more than anything else, it changes the composition of grasses to lower production grasses that, that don't have as much productivity for us from a, from a livestock standpoint. So by controlling mesquite, we, we allow those grasses, those more desirable grasses to come back in. They're not shaded out anymore. They require sunlight. And that helps us from the standpoint of grazing capacity on our, on our lands. Bob, what would you say? How, how serious is the problem mesquite presents here to Texas ranchers like yourselves? Well, it, it, it presents a big problem. As Charlie was saying, it is a big moisture robber and it's got a really, really deep root. And uh, our experience is where we've been able to, uh, to use some products to control it. It really benefits the pasture and boosts our forage. And, and uh, which is great for our cattle operation, but also for our wildlife operation, kind of opens up some areas and provides some better native native uh, plants for, for all the species. And what's been your track record of gaining control on mesquite? Well, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's it's one of the one of the species that I think uh, they've got products out now that they can get pretty good control on, and uh, you know probably close to eighty percent, you know, on uh, some of our historical old stands of mesquite. So, Charlie, what success stories have you seen related to mesquite across Texas? It's it's been uh, really good recently since we've been introduced Sendero herbicide. Sendero has not only incre increased the uh, the percent mortality of mesquite that we get, but the consistency between one job and the next job and the next job. We've learned a lot more about the timing, when to spray it, what the plant condition needs to be, and things like that. And so that's really helped us in terms of, of getting good control of mesquite and the consistency from one ranch to the next. Dave, I'd ask you, maybe some viewers are at home and, and, and maybe they've never really implemented a weed or brush control program and they see the economics or, or have the incentive to do it in these days, where do they begin? Well, it's uh, pretty easy if you're a self-help kind of person. Uh, one of the easiest ways is to go to rangeandpasture.com for some really nice recommendations there. We have some nice weed guides, so if you're a little bit unsure, like Charlie said, about what particular weeds you have out there, uh, you can certainly find their bright, shiny faces out there on the website. Uh, like everybody else does uh, uh, this uh, day and age, we have an app. A nice solution finder app out there that you can go to for some uh, self-help as well. The other really key critical uh, thing that Dow AgriSciences has to offer is that we've got range and pasture specialists spread out all across the U.S., uh, over 30 of them uh, as a matter of fact, and we're the only basic manufacturer that really offers that service to ranchers. We've got folks that can come out there and help uh, get you going, get you established. Um, they will come out and make personal recommendations out on the ranch. And they really train our retailer and applicator base to understand a lot of the local problems that are going on. So we have a full uh, bore set of folks ready and willing to come out and, and help you get control of those particular problems. Well, one last question for each of you. Uh, certainly there's uh, some cost involved in uh, doing some of the things we've talked about over the last couple of minutes. And Bob, let's start with you. Um, how does brush control pay for ranchers like yourselves? 
Well, there, there is some cost uh, involved there, but I think the economic benefit uh, certainly outweighs the cost. And, uh, you know, with, with our operation, we see tremendous amount of increased uh, calf crop and conception rates as well as winning weights and, uh, and, and increased stocking rates also. So it's a, it's a big help. And, and uh, I think it's in, with, with the market times we're having right now, it's certainly worthwhile. Charlie, what would you add? I think it's all about the forage and the forage response that you get. Um, take mesquite control, for example, and some of the recent research that's come out of Texas A&M University showing that that forage response can last 20 years and, and possibly as much as 30 years. Um, that doesn't mean that you're going to have mesquite control necessarily for that long, but the response that you get from mesquite control did last that long in some of their studies. So that sure makes it pencil out good. Absolutely. And what would you add from an economic perspective, Dave? Well, it's been a lot of fun last couple of weeks, Kevin. Uh, we've been traveling around Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, holding some seminars. And uh, when we look at uh, their production, uh, amount of forage that they can put on an acre up there, um, and you look at the cattle economics, the price that the cattle are right now, uh, we figured out that uh, it's about a 20 to 1 wow. payoff uh, once you uh, consider the cost of the application and then the gains of additional beef per acre uh, out there. So that's a tremendous payoff ratio and uh, one that I think cattlemen will be very happy to see. It's very impressive. It doesn't cost, it pays, as they say, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you guys for your insights. And remember, if you'd like more information on any of our discussion topics today, you can visit the website rangeandpasture.com.